let's uh, connect with Jonathan Shizzes who's joining us on the show right now along with uh, Vijay Rajani. A uh, very good afternoon to you gentlemen and Jonathan let me come to you and let's talk about this, uh, the construct of the market uh, right now. Uh, where do you see the favor tilted uh, when you talk about the sectors? Do you think that banking like everyone has been uh, saying will make a comeback and that comeback will be fierce uh, going ahead? Yes, uh, uh, good afternoon. Yeah, I, I'd agree with you. I, I think, um, you know, uh, banking remains um, and the whole financial sector remains a key one for India and many other markets for that matter. Um, and yeah, look, there's some great stocks in, in, in the index and, you know, that they've, some of them have done better than others. Um, but, but of course, the great thing about financials and banking is it's a great way to play the broader economy because obviously banks are involved in so many different sectors so it's a great way to play particularly if, if uh, for example for foreign investors who might not be able to own so many stocks it's a good way to play the broader economy with with uh, financials and obviously um, yeah we, we still uh, are doing that here uh, we'll get the numbers for matter flashing for you on the screen as well because overall the expectation was that there's going to be a bit of a recovery and the profitability has come ahead of estimates at 250 crore. We were working with a number of around 230 crore. So that's the first tick that you are seeing on that stock price right now. Moving um, on the positive side, we'll try and get you more details in terms of the internals. But let me quickly take it across to Vinay to get a sense as to what the technicals of that chart is suggesting. Vinay, would you recommend a fresh buy on Zomato at the current levels? So Zomato is into clear cut uptrend. It is trading at its all time high. So there is no confirmation of trend reversal. So it is into a continuation. I must say the previous swing high was placed at 232. So today it has crossed that level. So obviously it is looking good on the chart and the short term support I can see over here is around 224. So keeping that stop loss in mind where traders can continue to hold on to their long positions. So this is the short term strategy uh, keeping a stop loss at 224 and it should be kept as a trailing basis. So that we can ride the rally in the uptrend. So 224 should be the stop loss and one should continue to hold. All right, some more numbers coming in for Zomato, where you have the revenue that's come in higher by about 18% on a quarter and quarter basis, coming at around 4,206 uh, crore rupees. Let's see what's the number that we were expecting for Zomato's revenue because we are expecting the revenues to come in uh, at around uh, around uh, 3,986. Uh, the number is about 4,206 uh, crore rupees. That's your revenue coming. In uh, for Zomato, where the profit is coming at around 253 crores versus 235 crore rupees. But all of them will be actually keenly awaiting for that cryptic uh, post coming in from uh, uh, the Pinder, isn't it? Yeah, what do they mean by this trick? What are they doing about it? I think that is what interests uh, not only the investors, the consumers as well. But for now, the investors are interested in the fact that the stock is actually inching higher. It's a sizable beat which we have seen on the top line of the company. 4,000 plus crores versus expectation of sub 4,000. And that's trickling down with respect to the profitability as well because 250 crore is better than what the street was expecting. We're also waiting by to get that shareholder letter that they usually send out because that talks about how Blinkit has done, what the GOV has been, the gross order value, when do they expect the EBITDA break even, etc., to happen, and all of those internals would be keenly watched out for as well. But that stock with the initial details that we have on the revenue as well as the profitability looks like a beat. And even on the EBITDA front, it's pretty much sideways, to be honest. There seems to be a slight bit of miss as far as the EBITDA margin profile is concerned. But I think the fact that the top line was stronger would, as it is, has made uh, the you know profitability look like a beat even if on the margin front there is a bit of a sideways move. But Vinay, your quick word as far as the market mood is concerned because 25,000 we managed to you know hit that mark but correct from there, broader markets are coming under pressure. Is there some sort of selling pressure or booking profits that you're seeing? Yeah, so basically uh, breath was the only spent, uh, strongest part of the market but today uh, despite uh, Nifty trading with the gain of 60 points and uh, just 60, 70 points away from its all time high which was hit today. But looking at the micro cap, small cap and mid cap indices, it looks like, looks like a breath has turned weak and it, look, it looks like more of a profit looking phase for the mid cap and small cap. So I think this is the time to uh, turn cautious because when uncertainty was there, uh, breath was holding very strong. But today is a day when Nifty and Bank Nifty is not falling, but uh, breath has turned negative. So I think this is the time to get cautious looking at just at the breath and the small cap mid cap chart. So I'm a bit cautious right now. One should uh, stay away from the aggressive long, especially in the mid cap and small cap segment. 
the way it closes, it looks like that in the coming days, a uh, further extension of the fall could be there in the mid-cap and small cap. Then coming to you, let's talk about uh, what's exactly happening in these new age uh, tech counters and which one are you liking at this point in time? Because given the fact that you have Zomato numbers, they've definitely beaten the street when it comes to the profit, the revenue coming in. Also, the margin, no doubt, is sideways like the way Anisha mentioned. They missed on the EBITDA margin front. But what's your take coming in on the entire new age tech stock uh, companies? Uh, you think it's a, it's a space that one should be in, repose their faith in? Yeah, is it for me? Uh, Jonathan is for you. Sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, look, I think it's, you know, the, the great thing about the Indian market is 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 there are, you know, a lot of IPOs <laughs> that have come, come to the market. And yeah, it looks, there's there's a lot of choice and, and different, different companies you can look at. So I think it is definitely um, a very interesting space and one that investors should um, have some exposure to. I guess the only issue is um, these companies you know, at, at the early stage, it's a very competitive space. There's a lot of new entrants into the space. So trying to find those companies which are already have a fairly dominant position um, and, and look, look like they can, you know, carry on um, growing without losing too much comp to, uh, too much market share to new entrants. Um, that, that's the trick. And, and uh, you know, India does have a few of those uh, um, at the moment. And yeah, it's, a, it's definitely a space investors should uh, have exposure to. Uh, Jonathan, which are the you know sectors or themes that you have increased your exposure to, and where have you cut it? Uh, because I'm just trying to understand as to how you're looking at churning your portfolio right now. Financials, have you thrown in the towel? Have you lost patience with that, or you're sticking with your um, you know assessment there on the large private banks? Yeah, I mean we we tend not to trade too much, so we're we're more medium to long term holders. We, you know, obviously we we try not to get too concerned about short term market movements. So we we take more structural positions, um, and we haven't really done, you know um, uh, made any significant changes for some time. But I would would sort of uh, reiterate the the previous comment about some of the smaller cap and mid cap sectors, which are looking a little bit extended, and obviously. You know, but a bit overextended from a, a retail participation uh, perspective, but from a large cap perspective, yeah, we we continue to to like we we continue to like the financials, some of the capital goods companies and some of the consumer facing companies, but yeah, not much change from us really. We 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 we're, we're sort of long term holders, and we're looking for good quality companies that are delivering compounding growth. So, yeah, just um, not much change from us. Coming to you, let's talk about the auto space. We have the auto sales numbers trickling in, not that great coming in for Tata Motors. You also had M&M and uh, Maruti that uh, that reacted to the numbers. Today, they are reacting to brokerage comments as well as the number, the auto sales numbers. But what's your outlook coming in for, your, for the auto sector, given the fact that now you also have will have a new entrance coming in the two-wheeler space? Well, yeah, I think uh, you know the sector has been doing pretty well. In fact, in the last one or two weeks, this was one of the key sectors which managed to come back from an uh, underperforming zone to a, uh, you know, covering up the, of the underperformance. Many of the stocks made a very strong comeback. Tata Motors was, was one of the strongest one which made a comeback for itself, then led by the likes of Maruti, which also came back towards 13,000, 13,500 plus levels. Ashok Leland was also one of the top performers in the last one week. But I believe that, uh, you know, what we're also, uh, you know, seeing uh, is more of a patch of consolidation from the, from, uh, you know, most of the other stocks, the likes of, TVS Motors, Bajaj Auto, Hero Motor Corp. But I, I would probably believe that that's a healthy sign that, you know, if you have many of the stocks which were erstwhile performers, if they are going through a time-wise consolidation, and then you have new performers which are leading the charge from the front. So I would probably believe that that's a, a strong indication of a sector churn and also an indication that the trend is intact. So maintain the bullish stance on auto uh, uh, names as such. Tata Motors is one of the strongest pick uh, from the auto pack so far. Aisha Motors is something which I'll be bullish on from current levels. Okay, we are bullish on autos, but uh, Vinay, are you bullish on the power sector? Because Power Grid NTPC have been doing quite well since the analysts meet where they had upped their guidance with respect to the CAPEX as well. Torrent Power came out with a very strong set of numbers. Startup Power is reacting today as well. Coal India from the ancillary world is also uh, active today with that 3% gain. Uh, what's the you know top recommendation within Power which could be perhaps a fresh buy and where would you recommend taking profit off the table within the sector? 
So from the power space, I like Tata Power. So today for last three four session it has been rising, but today if we were to look at the chart weekly chart, it is a clear cut breakout from the last uh, the multi uh, 10 to 15 weeks. Uh, it was consolidating and now it is on the verge of breaking out from that consolidation. So Tata Power is the stock which I like, which is trading around 464. Um, if if you are a trader, then you can keep a stop loss at 450 odd levels for the short term. But on the upside, I'm uh, expecting Tata Power to move beyond 490 in the coming days. So Tata Power is a stock which I like and uh, today is a fresh breakout and momentum can be seen. So one can go for the Tata Power if somebody wants to pick a long call in the uh, power space. Okay, time now to take the BDSC trades from our technical experts as well. Vinay, why don't you go first itself? What's the buy today, sell tomorrow idea? It's the day of the expiry. Are you willing to carry some bets? Yeah, sure. So I have one long call and one short call. So Adani Port is looking good to me and looking uh, uh, like it has found a momentum and entire Adani group stocks have shown some uh, traction today. So I think uh, Adani Ports can, uh, one can, trader can initiate long around 1585. Stop loss can be kept at 1565 on the higher side. 1620 should be the target. And the another uh, call I'm going for the short sides, which is LNT Finance and Holding. In August future, one can go short. So I'm recommending selling LNT Finance Holding. So LTF August future can be sold at 178. Stop loss can be kept at 182. And on the downside, I'm expecting a target of 172. So these are the two calls, one long and one short. So those are the BTST ideas coming in from Vinay. But Kunal, coming to you, what are your BTST ideas? So I'll go with one by one cell. The first one is buying Sriram Finance. That's a, a chart which is looking very attractive, uh, confirming a breakout. Uh, even this kind of a market where the second half has been uh, a lot more uh, you know, profit booking for many stocks. So we recommend a buy with a target of 3,075. Stop loss could now be trailed higher to 29, uh, 20 for Sriram Finance. Uh, since the stock has moved up higher in the last five, ten minutes or so. Ambuja Summit is the stock which is broken below a critical support level uh, for itself today, breaking past about the 50 DMA. So, would suggest the sell with tar target of 642, stop loss could be kept at 675. All right, so those are the BTSE ideas from uh, our experts, but let's head across to Sharad to understand what's the chart in the dealing room then, Sharad. Focus is Blue Jet Healthcare, and what we are gathering from dealers is that HNI buying is coming across certain counters and it's likely that a marquee investor might be adding positions in the company. Now interestingly the volumes have added almost three times its 20 day average and the investors already included in the company include the names such as Valucast as well as Norges Bank. Interestingly the Q1 results are expected to come on August 7 and Street is expecting the numbers would be on the stronger side and recently the company commissioned its multi-product production block for manufacturing pharma intermediaries and also they commence the manufacturing of their validation batches in the pharma segment. Okay, point taken. So that's a view coming in as far as some of these, uh, you know, uh, uh, chatter is concerned in the dealing room. But one of the top losers from the index today is also m and Now that continues to reel under pressure despite reporting a decent set of numbers. In fact, the management was quite categorical that they're maintaining their a guidance of a 5% growth or as far as the tractor business is concerned for the industry as well. But the stock continues to reel under pressure because they also alluded to the fact that none of the consumers want a too long a waiting period right now and they're willing to uh, make those bets of trimming uh, the prices or giving discounts where needed uh, in order to fuel growth. Here out a slice of that conversation. Tractor market has gone through a difficult last year, uh, minus 7 uh, was the industry for last year. Quarter 1 was minus 1. Uh, we, we had a growth of 5% because we gained market share. We're seeing some very positive uh, green shoots. So just quickly to recap on that, uh, the rains have been very good in most parts of the country except two or three uh, states uh, towards the east and some part of north. but. West and South, which was really bad last year, has uh, been very good. The terms of trade, which is the price that the customer is able, the farmer is able to realize compared to the input cost, has kept getting better. Uh, we also have something we call the rural uh, uh, rural spend index, and we've seen that correlate very well with tractor sales in the past. And uh, you know, there's a mean point above which, when it goes, we start seeing tractor sales come up. This is a combination of what state government spends and government, uh, central government spends on rural and agriculture. We've seen that move up too. 
So a combination of these makes us believe that there will be a recovery in the second half. At this, mo at this point, we're not changing our full year forecast, which was at 5%. Uh, so, but we'll, we'll look at that in the next two to three months. But clearly, there is a rural recovery <coughs> that we're seeing. Good growth in SUVs, which said this year will be mid to high teens, and right now <laughs> quarter one was 24% growth. Uh, SUVs today is now more than 60% of the passenger vehicle market, so it's mainstream. Uh, the We do expect SUV even for the industry to grow faster than the passenger vehicle industry, which is the rest of the market. So maybe, you know, it'll be single digit growth is our sense for the industry for SUVs, lower than that for the passenger vehicles for the year. This was also the forecast that Siam had put out uh, earlier for the year. And because we have a couple of new launches and, you know, the differentiation of our brand, we are hoping to grow mid to high teens. So we hope to continue gaining market share. Uh, SUV as an industry will grow faster than passenger vehicles. Uh, and at a slower rate than earlier because of the base effect, as you said. Mm -hmm. By 2027, we would like 20 to 30 percent of our SUVs to be EV. Uh, and we've, we've created some really wow products, and you may have seen visuals of that, but you would start seeing them on the road in 2025. <laughs> All right, the management of m and talking about their earnings, but the street is definitely not enthused with the auto sales numbers that actually came out for Mahindra Mahindra, where the auto, uh, auto segment uh, sales missed ET now estimates. A lot of earnings pouring in, actually, well, uh, well spun enterprises. The stock is trading higher by about 3 or percent. Uh, post their earnings, if you look at the numbers, 18% uptick coming in the profit, the EBITDA margin also, EBITDA levels also a good significant uptick coming in on a year-on-year -year basis. You also have uh, uh, Newland Labs that's just reporting its numbers. And like I said, uh, Anisha, is just raining numbers, no more trickling in. <laughs> yeah, they're not trickling in. It's coming in thick and fast. And let's pull up the actual intraday chart of Newland Laboratories because it looks like it's a strong set of numbers. 98 crores is what the profitability is indicating versus um, 62 crore last year. So there's a spike up on that one. In fact, 7% higher as we speak for Newland Labs. Separately, uh, Jubilant Life has been doing quite well. You also have Capri Global in focus. Um, we talked about Acid DM Health as well. Numama Wealth is one other name which is in focus. And Oil India too is holding out okay. In fact, uh, there are a lot of earnings which are lined up as well. We got the numbers of Zomato, but ITC is the other one to watch out for. Let me take it across to Winnie to get a better understanding of what the expectations are from the street because the cigarette volume is something which is really important to track. The demerger is something which is on track and that's what we have been talking about. The management was categorical that in terms of the hotels business demerger, it is on track. But what kind of volumes do they get on the cigarette business? What kind of numbers come out of the hotel business is something which is important. What are the key numbers though? Let me take it across to Winnie now. So yes, in terms of numbers from ITC this time around, we are expecting a 6% growth in terms of overall the total revenue. What will be supporting the growth this time will be a steady performance that is again coming in from the hotel business as well as the FMCG business. That is going to be good doing well. But paperboard business like in the last few quarters we have seen, that is expected to be under pressure even this time. Profitability of the company, 5% growth in terms of the profits. EBITDA margin 37.9% versus 37.6%. So 30 basis point expansion in terms of the overall EBITDA the margins of the company. Cigarette volumes, that's expected to come in at somewhere around 3% and for the cigarette business, we're expecting an EBIT margin, expecting to see a bit of a contraction this time due to the raw material price inflation. Now, FMCG business, that's expected to see a growth of around 6 to 6, uh, six to 7% uh, with an EBIT margin of around 9% uh, is what one could expect from the FMCG business and paperboard business, that pressure is continuing because of the weak export trends that is there as well as the impact in terms of the demands, so that could be under pressure. Agribusiness, that's expected to start seeing a recovery and start seeing a bit of a positive sign this time. So yes, watching out for all of that with the cigarette volume growth, what is the FMCG outlook, growth trends over there and especially the margins, uh, anything in terms of pricing strategy as well as paperboard demand trends and when could we start seeing that positive recovery is something we are watching out for. Guys, ITC, that's the number to watch out for. But let's across, head across to Prakash who has an exclusive uh, story right now with regards to the coal ministry uh, uh, Prakash, what are you picking up? We are, uh, you've told us that uh, Coal Ministry is finalizing the cabinet note to set up a coal trading exchange. Yes, uh, it's a very significant development coming in. As we are learning from our sources that the Coal Ministry has 
finalized the cabinet note for setting up a first coal trading exchange in the country. A very significant development coming in as uh, it is being considered as one of the mega uh, reforms in the coal sector where the government is uh, planning to open up the coal market through an online trading uh, platform. The coal ministry has already completed uh, the inter-ministerial consultation on the draft cabinet note and now the final proposal has been prepared and uh, it has sought approval from the uh, union cabinet uh, to set a first coal, coal trading exchange in the country. Along with that, we are also learning that the government is uh, planning to set a first coal trading exchange by end of this year, which will provide an option uh, to the buyers and uh, sellers beyond uh, uh, term uh, linkages. Along with that, uh, it will also ensure easy availability of coal in the market. Uh, CIL may be allowed to, uh, to uh, sell its surplus coal through exchanges after making long-term uh, uh, linkages. A link is a commitment. So it's a very significant development, and the government is also expecting a uh, better price discovery with the market-based mechanism. Back to you. Very structural change if it does come by. I do wonder what will happen to the e-auction mechanism if it does go through because this will be good news for the users of coal. So your power companies, uh, the cement companies, a lot of these metal companies for which coal is a raw material and at times they suffer because of the supply constraints, they will stand to benefit. And of course, if the coal trading exchange does come in in the books of Coal India, that would itself mean that there would be additional income. So we'll have to understand the modalities a bit better. Where whether this is something which is outside the purview of Coal India, whether this is a separate body being formed, how will the mechanism come through? Because while the trading exchanges on power, that is IEX, uh, the power exchange, etc., have done really well, the gas exchanges have done really well, probably the step in the right direction, but we'll have to wait by and see how it really pans out. A quick word then, uh, Vinay, as far as the overall FMCG sector is concerned as well, ITC, we were discussing that ahead of the earnings, that stock is in focus. You also have Imami and Daba that reported numbers. Any top recommendations within FMCG? Yeah, so Imami Limited has been uh, trading very strong and today's, uh, today it is up by 1%. Uh, so overall trend has been very favorable. Uh, ITC cannot comment before the result because many of the times we've seen that chart gets reversed after the result. So as of now, it is into consolidation. Uh, only thing we can share with the ITC is the 484 is a very strong support. That needs to be tracked. If uh, ITC is um, managing to hold above this level, then the trend will definitely uh, continue on the upside. So 484 is the short term support. And Imami Limited, as I said, it is quite strong on the chart and looks very strong. So in the mid cap FMC space, I like Imami Limited for the short to medium term. as well as Kunal for joining in with us today. If you like this video, then like, share and subscribe to ET Now.